Well, if there were not enough surprises in 2020, President Trump's calls for Congress to raise coronavirus stimulus payments to Americans for the amount of $2,000, he won the support of some of his harshest critics, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, AOC, Bernie Sanders among them. Joining us now to discuss this very thing is Bruce Lavelle, Executive Director of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. Bruce, good to see you. Um, so this video, this four-minute video by President Trump that dropped on social media uh, yesterday, shared so many times, this has been one of the highlights, and even his critics are coming out supporting the idea of it. His supporters are saying this is the most presidential he's ever looked coming out in this four-minute video. What do you make of the video and the content that was inside of it? Sean, Merry Christmas. Let's just let's start off with this with all the news going on. Listen, I'm totally with the president. Anything and everything that relates to the stimulus bill has to involve only the American people, period. The small business owners, our churches, our community, everything at this pandemic that shut down our businesses have to that bill should only speak only to for the people by the people. All these other programs overseas and funding and foreign funding, I'm totally with the president on this. These small businesses, the American people didn't ask for this pandemic. They're in uh, terrible situations, especially in the small business. But watch this. Let me say this right here on your show, Sean. No one's talked about this. Not one dime put in minority business funding. You saw the president's initiative on uplifting the minority community. Minority Business uh, Development Agency right here. Not one dime in that line item. Sean, there are 30.6 million small business, 40% are minority businesses, Sean, okay? Listen, they make up 1.8 trillion of the revenue that stream that comes in this country. If they don't take their, their efforts in this bill and put it, like the president's saying, and divert it in the people, by the people, in the United States of America, we have to take care of ourselves and our people first and fund these particular initiatives in our country or we won't have a country, Sean. I'm with the president on this. And, I, and, it's, and he's absolutely right. It's an absolute disgrace on what they're trying to put their little pork belly projects in this. Listen, I wish, I wish and I pray that any time you, you push a bill forward, especially in a state of emergency that we're having in the United States, that whatever the, everything related to the line items that affect the American people is the only thing, Sean, that can go on that bill. All these other little wheel and deal projects on here muddying up the sure. waters and these special little programs. Look where we're at, Sean. I'm totally 100% with President Trump on this. 6,000 pages inside that bill. You think they've got some space for some of those items that you mentioned. That's a great point, by the way. Uh, you talked yeah. about that minority business funding. Let me, let me just show you this. Um, because these are uh, supporting tweets from the harshest critics of the president. I'm just going to run through these here really quickly. The first one's from AOC. The bottom line here is she says, glad to see the president is willing to support our legislation. She, she's supporting the $2,000 checks. Show this next one from uh, Nancy Pelosi. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has this to say. Um, just in a, in a quick nutshell there, one of the things that stand out, at last the president has agreed to $2,000. Um, so, again, she's supporting it. Then you've got Bernie Sanders that comes out. So, again, the harshest critics of the president, including the two we showed you. Here's Bernie Sanders. He says that's great. So, again, pushing forward on this. But bottom line is, what's the strategy here by the Democrats, Bruce? How, how do you read this? Because they have been pushing back. As you see, Lindsey Graham there is saying basically um, the COVID-19 package, while imperfect, will save jobs and lives. The sooner the bill becomes law, the better. So then you've got Republicans saying, no, 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 go ahead and sign it. Democrats are saying, hey, no, we support what the, the president is doing. How do you read this on a political landscape? Well, it gets back to the American people and the viewers here on Newsmax. Go look at the actual line items on what they're proposing in terms of funding. Now, watch this. A lot of those folks that are cheering this along, Sean, follow the money. Follow the money to the special interests on why they're so enthusiastic about, because look at all the attachments on the bill, on the special interest funding that they're trying to push. Hoorah, this is what they're doing. So, yeah, they're okay. Yeah, we'll do two. We'll do three. Yeah, because they want their programs on these line items, Sean. And this, once again, that's a disgrace. And listen, everyone watching this, pay attention to your congressional districts and your Senate district. Y'all get out there in America and get involved and pay attention to every time they send these bills up and watch, follow the special interest that's tied to these bills. This is what's killing our great country. 
We have got to stop this. This is really what's killing us right here, Sean. So whatever is on that the, the state of the emergency of the country is the only thing that should be on that bill that relates to the American people, not all these foreign gigs and all these other special interests, money that they're trying to fund and money over here. We're in a state of emergency. That's all we need to be talking about right now, Sean. Sure, but here's, here's the— I get emotional about this. No, I, well, <laughs> hey, look, you're talking about money, and a lot of folks get emotional about their money because that's their livelihood, right? And we understand that for sure. We're talking about jobs as well. But here's the thing with this, Bruce, is— there, a lot of folks are saying, hey, look, 600 bucks, that's not enough. These folks have been out of work. They can barely pay their bills right now. $600 is not going to cut it uh, when you told me I can't work anymore. But then there's the other side where this would support the unemployment benefit. This would support the PPP loans um, and, and other folks that definitely need it. Some say, look, go ahead and sign it. Maybe try to get more checks later on, but go ahead and get this done because yeah. the sooner the better. Where do you yeah. stand on that? Because it is a hard balance. Yeah. Let, let me let me push a little stronger here. Being a small business owner in Atlanta for over 27 years, John, I've said this before, I'm one of 30.6 million small businesses. We make up 64 plus percent of the GDP, Sean. We pay the payroll quarterly taxes. Listen, everything we're discussing right now is about the payroll taxes. All the businesses on the backs, we're the agents of the IRS. That's what we call it, where we send our payroll taxes up to D.C. to where all these discussions are going on right now. Sean, open up America. That's all we have to do. The small businesses know how to govern themselves. I've said this over and over and over and over. Big boxes. I tweeted it. They are customers running around rampantly. But these small businesses, these mom and pop cafes, people out there, I, I hear you. I know what that feels like. I have colleagues who hocked their homes, who hocked their cars, did everything to start their business are on the hook since March trying to pay these mortgages, pay this rent, and that's the antidote, Sean. Open up the country. Let us get out there and stimulate our businesses. We don't have to have this conversation about going and asking and begging for st something that is already ours. This is the conversation. Get aggressive like some of these states, these Republican states, these Republican governors and cities have been very aggressive. Thank God for Rick DeSantis down in Florida and Georgia here, Brian Kemp and some of these others. Because, Sean, let me tell you something. If we didn't have that leadership across the country, you think it's bad right now, Sean? This is the conversation we have to have. Open up the country. We know how to govern. We have the science. The vaccines are out there. The social distance is there. The masks are there. We have everything. That's the only antidote to get out of this is open up this country and get this money stream moving again. And let's stop pulling, pulling more money out of money that we're not generating any income because the businesses are shut down, Sean. That's what the American people... Work, working class people need to understand something. When they talk about that, it comes on the backs of our payroll taxes. So Sorry, you're Sean. saying open up the country. Day before the Christmas, but I'm you're emotional so about this. <laughs> a message uh, heard, message received. Bruce Lavelle, Merry Christmas to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thanks. Merry Christmas to all the Newsmax. Thank you, Sean. Got it.